Hi, this is Bob with RealTVFilms.com. We're in Austin, Texas, covering the South by Southwest Film Festival. Tantoon Carnell has been gracious enough to come by and speak to us. She's an older than America. Pleasure to meet you, ma'am. And pleasure to meet you. And can you tell us a little bit about your character for the viewers? My character is called Auntie Apple, and she has made a decision in her early life that she would toe the line in the boarding school. She would sing the national anthem. She would um, do these things that were required in the church without any any resistance whatsoever. She decided that that was her best protection um, because she saw what was happening to children who were speaking their language, who were standing by who they were inside, and, and they were demolished. So she made that decision very early on and uh, became a staunch Catholic. And she wore a cross around her neck and um, was harboring the priest, I guess. Right. Go to the boarding school. Rain suffers from serious delusions. How are the kids? I didn't hit them, did I? Kids? There were no kids. Oh, rain. I'm seeing things, Johnny. Just like my mom did. You have been shown through these visions what they do to you? The truths of the past. Kill the Indian, save the man. They tried to whitewash us. You know where she is. You tell me hey. where she is. Do you? How do you think this film will be received in uh, the community at large? I guess in the reservations and other places. I mean, tell me a little bit about that and your thoughts. I think that this film will be appreciated by many people. There might be a few people that might have a little argument here or an argument there, but because uh, you're not going to please all the people all the time. Right. But fundamentally, I feel like this movie can be a lance into an old sore that's been there for a long time. And one of the things that I love about it is not only does it talk about the horror of it all, but it also shows how we heal. And this is what I've seen in my path. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm Canadian, I'm a, a dual citizen, but a lot of my experiences with seeing the healing in our communities has been through my experiences in Canada. And in the 60s and early 70s, it was seen that there was so much um, dysfunction in our communities, some um, alcoholism in our population in the jails is just astounding. Mm -hmm. and, and then began the movement to try to heal. And how we heal is through our culture, through the ceremonies, through prayer, for taking back our relationship with Creator. Because what they did in those schools is they denied us that we had a relationship with Creator. Those those churches um, brainwashed people into believing that they had to have a priest in order to talk to God. You know, other than that, you're not worthy. You don't have a right. And, and what our, our traditions, what's been given to us by the Creator, gives us back that relationship so that we can be in touch with the Creator. And we're not something dangling off to the side from creative right. force. We take our place in the breath of that. Oh, you sound, I mean, just sitting here listening to you, you sound very passionate about this. And I am, I am. Were you, uh, it, w was this passion there before, or did you just discover all of this once you became familiar with this character? No, uh, this is something that's, um, that I've known for a long, long time. And that's how I got into this business in the first place. It was rage absolute livid rage and before I even knew what the history of the church was I was eight years old 
when, when I, in my own heart, walked away from the church, which terrified my grandmother. I mean, there's so much brainwashing that's gone on in the communities, you know. My poor grandmother thought that, that she was going to go to hell because of my attitude. But that's what the church taught, is that if you don't raise your children that way, then you're going to go to hell, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, I've, I've, I've felt the injustices, and I've seen the injustices. I, I wasn't allowed to have my mother. I didn't have my father. Um, my grandparents were there in my life. My grandfather was gone by the time I was 10. And, and my, my brother had an early early death and I mean it's there's there's so little left of our family and it's such a struggle to to live as a full human being in this society when your family's been demolished your community's been demolished and it's all been demolished and and that's my passion is that I will live and I will live to tell and that was at a certain point in my life. That was my only reason to live, is that I wanted to tell on them, you know, because I've seen things and I know things. Wow. And, uh, okay, call me crazy. Call me over the top or whatever. Fine. But this is the way I see it. And uh, that's why I'm in the arts. Right. Well, thank you so much for telling us your story. I mean, wow, it's... I, I sort of got the chills right now listening to you because it's, I mean, it's, it, to me, it's, it's a, it sounds like an incredible journey. And thank you so much for taking the time to talk to Real TV Films. And best of luck to you in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you for asking. Oh, you bet.